Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, we are talking about hairy celebrities. Not really. Well, kind of. We're basically talking about the war on female body hair. Body hair is an awkward thing. And what's even more awkward is that it shouldn't be. We as human beings all grow it. Men, women, even children have body hair. But for some reason, body hair is not only accepted on men, but it's actively celebrated. Whereas on women, it is shamed. We're made to feel embarrassed if we have it. And basically, aside from the hair on our heads and our brows and our eyelashes, we are essentially expected to be bald everywhere else. Now, before we get into the video, I wanna say a huge thank you to Kenzie for sponsoring today's video. I'm a hairy person, but the thing is, I don't really mind it. So for me personally, I choose not to regularly shave my underarm hair. I have underarm hair. But the one part of my body hair that I do choose to remove is my bikini line because it irritates the heck out of me. Oh, I used to shave my bikini line and I used to get the worst shaving rash afterwards. It was so itchy, it was so inflamed, my skin was so angry at me. So what I do now is I get a trimmer, I trim the hair down and then I use my Kenzie. So what Kenzie is, is it is an at-home IPL hair removal device. It lets you control your body hair from the comfort and privacy of your own home. No more paying big money to drive to a proof professional IPL hair removal salon, have a stranger all up in your grill zapping at you, only to have to do it again in a few weeks time. With Kenzie, you choose when you want to remove your hair, how often, and all from the privacy of your own home. I personally love to grab a cup of tea, whack on a podcast or a YouTube video and make a part of my little self-care ritual. And considering IPL laser hair removal does not hurt in the slightest, I mean, in fact, aside from a little heat, I can't feel anything at all, it turns into such a relaxing practice. IPL works by emitting a pulse of light that effectively, over time, destroys your hair follicle. So that means that unlike shaving or waxing, over time with continued use, the hair that you're trying to remove will either not grow back at all, or it'll grow back both slower and finer. So that means no more itchy shaving rash, no more uncomfortable, messy, hot wax. My Kenzie results, I'd say my bikini line was noticeably different in about two to three weeks. And then after a while, they just grew back slower. By now, I basically have no hair there at all. Kenzie comes with a power cord, so you never run out of batteries, a 12 month warranty and a 90 day money back guarantee. So if you guys are like me, you've tried wax, you've tried shaving, you've tried epilation, you're not a huge fan of any of them and you're willing to try something new, I will pop the link to the Kenzie IPL machine that I have in the description box down below. And also Kenzie has been kind enough to offer my viewers $50 off, which for a discount is really bloody substantial. Check it out guys, if you're in the market for a different method of hair removal. Body hair is normal. It's totally natural. It's not gross or disgusting, despite what you may have been led to believe all your life, like I was. I remember being sat in science class when I was about 13 or 14, and the boy in front of me turned around, looked under the desk at my legs, saw my hairy legs, and was like, ooh, look at her leg hair. And of course, everybody else in the class turned around to look at my leg hair. To say I was mortified would be an understatement. Like, I wanted the ground to swallow me up. I was so embarrassed. But the thing is, he had hairy legs, and that was okay. But because I was a girl, I wasn't supposed to. It's like, what is this? The fact of the matter is, hair grows on our legs, on our toes, our butts, our foofs, our underarms, our bellies. Fun fact is that the only place that humans don't grow body hair is our lips, the palms of our hands, and the soles of our feet. Now, thankfully, I feel like this is one unrealistic beauty standard that we are starting to actively fight back against. Look at Gigi Hadid. She appeared in Love Magazine's advent calendar with what appeared to be... <gasps> underarm hair. The media went wild and so did the internet. There were comments from people, both men and women, who were horrified saying things like disgusting, hashtag yuck, ew, horrible armpit hair, going to vomit now, shave those disgusting armpits, ew, with armpits. However, a source later came out to defend Gigi against the underarm hair debacle and state that of course it wasn't underarm hair. It was residue left behind by the navy jacket that she was wearing on set. Now I have my doubts about that as the residue is located basically exactly where underarm hair grows and Gigi is an adult human. So she does grow underarm hair. <laughs> Plus it was pretty obvious. So you'd think that somebody on set, whether it be the photographer or the makeup artist or the lighting guy would be like, hold up everyone, Gigi's got some lint under her arm. Let's clean that off before we continue the photo shoot. So I think it probably was underarm hair. Maybe they did it to get people talking. If that was the plan, it worked really well. And honestly, I think it looks great. <laughs> then there's model, feminist and author Emily Ratajkowski, who proudly shows off her impressive underarm fluff for Harper's Bazaar magazine. When she posted the image to Instagram, she was again, of course, met with a tirade of comments from gobsmacked and appalled people who said things like, ew, shave that shit. And of course, plenty of 
vomit emojis, but it's like, you do know that even if she had chosen to shave her armpits, in that instance, she still grows underarm hair. Now this rebellion against the double standards when it comes to body hair isn't actually a totally new thing. There have been some women who have stood up throughout the generations and said, Fuck you, I will not be told what to do with my own body or my body hair. Women like Sophia Loren in the 50s, who was arguably one of the biggest and hottest movie stars of her time, Helen Mirren, who back in 1968 left her pits furry by choice, the beautiful Lisa Bonet, who I absolutely adore, she proudly rocked her underarm hair back in the 80s, Julia Roberts, who decided to forego shaving her pits and walked the red carpet with obvious underarm hair back in the 90s, then of course we've got the likes of Madonna, who is always pushing the boundaries. It's Kind of her thing, and also her daughter Lordess, who is now following suit and rocking armpit hair. Britney Spears, who at the height of her career and fame walked the red carpet with <gasps> stubble visible under her arms, god forbid! Beautiful, powerful women like Amanda Stenberg, Ashley Graham, Janelle Monet, Cara Delevingne, Kelly Rowland, Miley Cyrus, Bella Thorne, the list goes on and on. If you are a woman and you happen to grow hair on your belly, your back, your neck, please know that it's totally normal. There's nothing wrong with you. You're an absolute babe and you don't have to be ashamed of it. Look at Ariana Grande. Her hair grows down the back of her neck. Megan Fox displayed her peach fuzz on her back in the sunshine. Cardi B proudly rocks her snail trail. We have hair on our legs too. Look at Rihanna. Look at Monique, who purposely pulled up her dress on the red carpet to show off her furry legs. Even the epic Adele refuses to constantly battle her leg hair, and she said, when asked what her husband at the time thought, she said, he has no choice. I'll have no man telling me to shave my f***ing legs. Shave yours. I could not have put it better myself. We all grow body hair. It is as natural and normal as having hands. Why do we feel this insane pressure to remove it? all of it, all the time. Well, there are a few reasons. Number one is that women have been convinced that having body hair is unfeminine, that having body hair makes us look manly. It certainly doesn't help when huge conglomerate hair removal companies actively shame women into buying their products and removing their hair. In 2014, Veet released an ad which warned women to not risk dudeness. I shaved yesterday. Don't risk dudeness. Good morning. Good morning. No, 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 no. You're just full-time. I need to help you do the front No. Uh, no. I shaved yesterday. Oh, how cold! I'm really too cold. Don't risk dudeness. Jennifer, don't worry. We are going to take good care of you. I shaved yesterday. Please, not the panties. Don't risk dudeness. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm a little prickly. I shaved yesterday. Don't risk dudeness. Beat wax strips. Feel womanly around the clock. What was that? Now I've said this in videos before, but our bodies are smart. Our bodies don't really give a shit about society's unrealistic body standards. We grow body hair for a reason. All mammals grow body hair, or fur, humans included. Body hair has clear biological purposes such as retention of heat, distinguishing between males and females, protection of the skin and reflection or absorption of sunlight, both of which are very important. It traps dirt, debris, pathogens and potentially harmful microorganisms. In addition, hair follicles produce seed an oil which actively prevents bacteria from reproducing. It also helps to prevent friction during sexy time, which makes a lot of sense. You don't want to be uncomfortably sticking to your partner when you're trying to be sexy. There's also this argument that I've heard time and time again that body hair is somehow unhygienic or disgusting or dirty. Let's confirm that's not true. As long as your general personal hygiene is taken care of, 
Body hair is neither here nor there. In fact, there's evidence that actually suggests that removing your body hair is more unhygienic than leaving it in place. Body hair actually serves to keep pathogens at bay and your bare skin is actually a better environment for bacteria. So by removing your body hair, you're actually encouraging bacterial growth. As when your hair is gone, the bacteria and sweat that would have been on the hair is now sitting directly on your skin. So that argument is a bit daft. Also, can I just point out, for that matter, if having body hair is so unhygienic, so disgusting and so dirty, then why are men not actively encouraged into removing all their body hair too? Why is it just women? I don't ever recall seeing ads shaming men into removing their chest hair or their underarm hair or their willy hair, or their leg hair. But it's just women. How's that for a double standard? Then, my friends, there's the weird Lolita culture that surrounds the removal of female adult body hair. Let's not ignore the fact that after puberty, women naturally have a lot more body hair than before. So is it not a little bit creepy that we as adult women are encouraged to remove that body hair to make our bodies look more like their prepubescent state? It's really bloody weird if you stop and think about it. Like look at this ad, for example. This is not an ad for hair removal per se. This is an ad for Love's Baby Soft Fragrance, but it does highlight the absolute creepy bullshit that adult women should resemble little girls. Women have been encouraged to remove their body hair since the ancient civilizations of Roman Egypt. But the real business of hair removal took off in 1914 when the popular magazine at the time, Harper's Bazaar, ran this advertisement for Gillette's first women's razor. Gillette ads urged women to remove unsightly and objectionable hair from their bodies, especially their underarms, using their razor, of course. The milady décolleté promised to remove the humiliating growth of hair on face, neck and arms. It referred to shaving as a refinement that has become a modern necessity and to its product as the dainty little Gillette used by the well-groomed woman to keep her underarm white and smooth. With the emergence of rationing in World War II, women were no longer able to get their hands on nylon stockings as easily, if at all, and so began feeling the need to shave their legs to compensate. By 1964, 98% percent of American women were routinely shaving their legs and the damage was done. <laughs> women were now actively expected to be hairless as adults. So if you feel embarrassed or awkward about rocking your natural body hair, ads like this shoved in your face certainly don't help. Insinuating that women must be going through a breakup and therefore have let themselves go, that not only should you remove your body hair, but that even the way in which you remove it is shameworthy, with razors being for boys. That if you have body hair, you look like a bloody ape. That leg feathers, <laughs> leg feathers will ruin your romance. It's no wonder that we and our mums and probably our grandmas too have felt this intense need to battle our own natural bodily physiology. It's crazy. So what it boils down to, my friends, is this. No adult woman should feel pressured either way. The choice is ours. There is nothing wrong with removing your body hair if that's what you choose to do. You can remove some of it, a patch of it, a portion of it, or alternatively, you can choose to remove all of it. You might like being a bold, hairless human, that's perfectly okay. That doesn't make you anti-feminist. It doesn't make you anti-woman. But the thing is, is it boils down to choice. We as the adult woman get to choose what we do with our own bodies and our body hair. Neither is right or wrong.